Welcome, everybody. We're here with part two, which is an introduction to the Menace of Darth Maul expansion. If you didn't see our first video, check out the overview. That's going to kind of give you the 30,000 foot view. This video is intended to go a little deeper into set one, which is Menace of Darth Maul, 140 cards released 1999, 18 foils. There's an alpha and beta element a little bit. So there's some interesting things to talk about here. We thought we'd get into it. Eric has brought some of his collection to show off. Hello again, Eric. So what's your favorite thing about this set? I, I think the favorite thing about this set is that they did kind of go back and do the beta to try to get it right and um, match what became the standard for them for the following sets. So I, uh, that's my favorite thing is just the, the collectability of it. Um, as well as this set really was a huge mass market release. You know, back in the day, you could buy this in Target and they had just retail versions of this, which, you know, for a lot of the Star Wars CCGs wasn't wasn't a thing. And so it was really cool to see see that you could go to the store and buy this. You know? um, OK, so when you say alpha beta, what, what do you mean exactly there? Like what, what, what how do we determine an alpha versus a beta? Yeah, so the, the only way you'll determine it from a regular card is the beta is going to have a small Greek B in the copyright line at the very lower uh, end of the card. Um, I can try to show that on camera. I don't know if that'll show up, but that, that's the only distinction that you'll notice um, other than they corrected. Um, there were two cards that were error printings in the alpha release. Um, the, the EOP and a battle droid, they had the wrong number of counters on these cards. Um, EOP had zero and a battle droid had three, um, and they should have been one and two respectively. Um, so they did correct the printing error in those beta print runs. Um, and back in the day, you could send in your alphas and they would s they send you a corrected uh, beta version. But uh -huh. um, so, so they did those corrections of those two cards. But then largely one of the things they did is correct their foiling process alpha foils were not well done in terms of they were overly shiny their edges were all beat up um, the surface foiling was not as good so it's, it's very similar to you and i were talking very similar like the star wars endor foils kind of before they had their foiling processes all figured out the alpha foils are very much like that and then the beta foils are fixed as are the rest of the foils for the rest so of the i think age. you had a couple of the foils you could show off sort of the difference there so there's 18 foils in this set right and i think Show, comparing the two is pretty interesting. Yeah, so why don't we start with that, and then I'll show some of the sealed product too, so you guys can see that. But sure. starting with starting with the foils, the one nice thing about having the eighteen card foil set is it you won't be able to fully see this, but it does display really well in an album where you'll have you know light side on a nine page and then dark side on a nine page, so it displays really well in an album. I know there's a lot of glare here, but um, what I wanted to show you just hopefully it can get picked up on camera is just show you a little bit of the difference between the alpha and the beta on the foiling, like I was mentioning. Um, so let me just pull um, one of each of those two cards to, you know, give you the, the comparison of that. Um, so, and let me see here, I'll maybe try to hold this up close to the camera so I can um, have a backdrop for you to see this off of. So, this is an alpha foil, um, very shiny. You know, the, the whole surface is excessively shiny. And then, it, again, I don't know if you'll be able to pick this up, but the, yeah, the, ed the edging there is very bad. You know, you can kind of see just the foiling scratching coming through on the edge. And these are this is a packed fresh card. Um, so there you can kind of get the idea of the excessively shiny surface. Um, then comparatively, the the beta here has definitely better surface foiling. This one has a foil line, so it's not a great comparison. But um, in terms of seeing just like his lightsaber light up there, not having the excessive foiling, not having the damaged edges, you know, the edges are great. So this is a, a beta foil. Um, and then we can see the little B there, right? Can yeah. You see that at all? I wish I had a laser pointer, but it's this little next to the little star right below. <laughs> Yeah, right below the star there, the little little B. So, yeah, that's that's kind of the the difference in foiling there. You know, this one is very shiny, and then this one is more matte. So shiny is the the alpha. 
And alpha, um, when we say that's the first print, just to, you know, for, if you're not tracking that. Yeah. And um, the foils do have differing rarities too. Um, and so it's um, five point star indicates an ultra rare foil. And then the, in this first set, they did actually do four point star and three point star for uncommon and common foils. They quit doing that though after Menace of Darth Maul. Um, the latter sets, you always just have a five pointed star on the foils and you have to look up to. Because the cards were still rare, right? They're still they a rare. They replaced. That's the one thing with Young Jedi. The foils replaced a rare slot. So some people mm -hmm. didn't like that they got like a foil pod racer, for example, which is an uncommon card and it would replace their rare. Um, so the later sets, they no longer foiled uncommon cards anymore and they always always had a, a five-pointed star because yeah that was very confusing collection wise because like let me show you an example here like um a destroyer droid squad which is a rare card um has a four-pointed star foil um so it, it has kind of the uncommon indicator but that's just indicating it's an uncommon foil even though the base card destroyer droid squad is a rare um so that that led to some confusion, and I think that's why after this set they only did five pointed stars on all foils, and they only foiled cards that were rare in the first place. It's um, fun to like look back now with the benefit of history and just seeing how much of this was just learning as you go, right? We're gonna build the plane as we fly it, you know, it, with with these releases with these companies realizing like, oh, it turns out when you replace the rare with a foil, and because Endor is the same way, the, the foil replaced the rare, so you might get an Ewok glider. Yeah. yeah, right. It's like, if, you know, if you get a Darth Sidious, you're going to be really happy. But if you get Ben Quadranaro's as pod racer, you know, you might not be so happy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So uh, let's check out the sealed product a little bit. And yeah. I understand we're going to be opening some packs here. I should have said at the front end to keep people interested, but we're going to be opening up a few packs as well. So yeah. let's check out what the seal product looks like. Yeah, so we'll try to crack a pack of each of these uh, that we do the video of. But to show you that the interesting thing with the with the boxes is I'm going to show you the alpha first. So this is an alpha booster box. You'll notice the difference here is there's no small card images. It's just Darth Maul's head. And um, if you see any of the subsequent sets, what's confusing is Jedi Council, Battle of Naboo, those always have small cards depicted here. Um, in the limited edition. It's the opposite for Menace of Darth Maul. There are no, no cards pictured here, means it's an alpha. For beta, you have the cards pictured there. Oh, nice. So that's that's, an easy that's one. really the easy way to tell. You can tell booster boxes very easily what's what. So that this is a beta box, obviously. It's got the cards there, and alpha doesn't. So that's so, the... These are question. Oh. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> These are going to be much more rare. You will you will very rarely see these. You will almost always see. Um, I don't know the exact print runs, but I, my guess is it's ten to one that you'll mm -hmm. see ten of these for every one of the other one that you see. Yeah, that was about my question. Just for the collectability. So alpha, very very accessible and cheap. Beta, much harder to find. Mostly just because very few people even had a chance to collect it or bothered to collect it, um, or even know it exists. Frankly, <laughs> so. Yeah. And we looked at the starter decks in our intro video, but you know, a starter deck is just a solid red Obi-Wan um, with Darth Maul on the back. Um, as far as booster packs go between Alpha and Beta, you won't be able to tell the difference unless you really get into it. You know, the, the, this is one of these is Alpha, one's Beta. I can even tell you which is which on the surface. You basically would have to pull back this thing here, and there is a tiny Beta in there right there indicating this one is beta it's but such a cute way to do it right like they couldn't do something more like whiteboard or blackboard it's like no let's have a small greek b hidden yeah. in the bottom right yeah well, so kind of like what they did for lord of the rings a little bit that concept where it's very hard to tell it's very hard to tell the difference especially on the packaging when you get the cards obviously you can look for that b a lot easier but i i do appreciate that the the sealed displays are super easy to tell the difference if you, yeah. if you go if you know that that's what you're looking for. And actually, I just noticed this too. I've never really compared these side by side on the front, even if you look at the front of the display. So that's similar, you know, Obi-Wan, Young Jedi. But then look, the beta has got all the cards again and the alpha just says collect, play, trade. Is the, the font slightly different? 
<laughs> young Jedi, like when it says Young Jedi, is it slightly different font? Um, like it, yes, it is. Text. It's red embossing behind the beta, no yeah. embossing on the <laughs> alpha. Some, so some the, graphic designers like, what if we did a little bit of a red embossing? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, go for it. <laughs> I think it looks better. But uh, all right, well, any any kind of final thoughts before we go to our, our pack opening uh, module? Um, no, other than um, just, again, for foreign language collectors, um, mm -hmm. this does appear in um, German and Japanese. I'll just flash those for you really quick. German is super inexpensive, you know, um, same cost probably or maybe even a little less than the English. This is a German box. Um, Die Bedrog des Darth Maul. I'm sure I'm butchering that, but there, there you go. Um, and then um, Japanese is very different. Japanese is very expensive, and the packaging is entirely different. It's oh, in that's awesome. Uh, look look you know, how cool that looks. <laughs> it's in definitely something you know more Japanese style of a package. You know, in terms of little perforated, the packs would just kind of you you pop this top off. I'm obviously not going to do it, but that's the the packaging for the uh, for the Japanese. So um, very very different packaging there and value wise japanese is going to command just a huge huge premium over and above the um english and japanese is going to be more expensive than anything else in young jedi um and the packs the packs overall look pretty similar or i should say the the german pack looks exactly the same other than again the german wording there the japanese pack is a little different though where it has a different style where it has a hang tag on there. Um, I never and, knew what that was called. <laughs> so now I learned. Yeah. Produced oh, by I Tommy, know. actually. So yeah, definitely these look, you know, they almost look more counterfeit, -y, but it's, you know, that's the that's the Japanese version and that's the German. Um, and you do have you do have again starter decks in each of those two, Japanese and German, but just wanted to quick show those for collectors. And then I guess the one final thing on this in terms of sealed product, the, what was really interesting about this is you could get it in stores back in the day. One of the big things they had is what they call these collector boxes, which this was, I guess, their comparison to Magic's fat pack, mm -hmm. or I guess bundle they call it now, because you can't call it fat. But um, <laughs> so this is the, uh, it basically is just uh, 12 booster packs and a card list and a fancy storage box. So that this was a retail product that you could get like in regular stores, um, not gaming stores, but just like your you know department discount stores. Um, and then they did even have um, packs on hang tags, where you know again similar to like if you go to Walmart and buy Magic cards, they actually had this for Young Jedi, which was cool. Uh, you got a starter deck and a and a booster pack there. So there's some interesting oddities for you guys it's just fast i keep thinking with the magic comparison in, in 1999 what magic you could have been buying in the value that holds today versus the young jedi yeah it's just sometimes we chose poorly yeah. <laughs> in, in the words of uh was it indiana jones yeah. um Okay, well, let's get to our pack opening. I think this will be a little fun. Uh, so you can open an alpha and beta. Is that correct? Yeah, I got I got one of each, and I can show you guys kind of the difference. Also, looking, I don't know if this is if you'll be able to see this on camera. The beta does appear to have a large silver strip here compared mm -hmm. to the alpha doesn't. But other than that, pretty pretty similar. Um, one other quick note: um, they back in the day had these Jedi points promotions. So all the pack wrappers had five points on them, a starter deck, I think maybe it was 15, but you could send in these points for uh, promo cards. Um, it was originally a foil Anakin Skywalker, and then you could tr tr later on trade them in for a uh, Shmi Skywalker uh, non-foil promo. So um, that's what, you know, kind of what that is, but you'll see that on everything. But yeah, um, I'm good to crack these if, if you're ready just to kind of show people what what the cards look like. So this is the Alpha pack. Again, if you want to crack cheap Star Wars cards, Alpha Menace of Dark Maul would be where it's at. You can get these packs very extremely inexpensive. And I'm not going to waste a lot of time reading the cards or anything. I'll just show, you know, here's your commons. So you got seven commons. And there's our rare. It's the Destroyer Droid Squad we were talking about with the five-pointed star there. Um, but this is a non-foil, of course. Um, but just the the comparison. So that's our rare. So you get seven commons. 
rare yeah. indicator, by the way, for folks sorting this at home is the Darth Maul symbol. So that is a Darth Maul symbol. So that's that. what the Darth Maul is, is Darth Maul is the yeah. set indicator. Um, and then there's rarity, set number, Darth Maul. And then this little yellow dot there, that's the deck building dot. So um, that's how you put together a deck if you're playing the game. But you'll have basically, you'll end up with 30 characters, 10 weapons, 10 starships or locations, and, and 10 battle cards. So, but yeah, nothing too exciting there, but that's give you a little taste of what the menace of Darth Maul is. Like I said, this one is largely based on Tatooine. We, we did end up getting a couple Naboo cards there. But, you know, Tatooine is going to have the yellow borders. Um, and then even like the weapons here, you can tell are obviously very Tatooine based. You got your Tusken Raiders on the blaster rifle and stuff. So, and even your battle cards are pod racing and Sebulba and his attendants and all that. So, so yeah, there's a quick look at that. Like I said, here's the beta pack then. And let me, before I open that, I'll just, they hit it in there here underneath the, underneath the tab is where they hid that that beta symbol but there you there's can the B. there you can see the B I guess we also should have mentioned probably earlier but there is a light side and dark side in this game <laughs> so yes <laughs> sorry um for the back of the cards I actually like the card back design you know there they can very easily distinguish which is yeah which is I realized we should have said that in probably the first video but it's okay Star Wars players take that for granted. I <laughs> didn't even think to mention that either. Yeah, I think it's one of those things that's like a little. It's it's um stylistically not not a good choice to have two backs. I think which is yeah. magic randomly got lucky with it. So, so there, you the right there. There's the little B there. And so we're gonna have our seven commons again. The set, like I said, is otherwise identical. With a couple corrections, I guess. Right. Oh, there's our rare C three PO. That's, that's, that's a pretty good rare, right? Cool character. And then there's our there's Captain Tarples, Matt. And there's our uh, <laughs> there's, my, there's my Tarples. There's our three uncommons. So so there's our uh, packs there. Like I said, yeah. Only difference you're going to notice is that is that little beta symbol. Um, and, well, the, and then the foils. So um, well, very cool, Eric. Thanks thanks for sharing uh, this stuff and. We're going to do more of these videos. Uh, we have Jedi Council next. <laughs> and then uh, I think we're going to do one for each set and then maybe one kind of miscellaneous at the end. And we might do a learn to play. Uh, if there's interest from folks, we're going to kind of gauge that and move along. Any kind of final thoughts here? No, I, I think, like I said, this this one came out with a bang in terms of you know the amount of product, the, the quantity, the different ways in which you can buy it. And then I'd say it, you know, dramatically dropped off. So you'll notice in our latter videos, it's going to just be starter deck booster pack and that, you know, basic booster box and that's it. So um, this, this definitely, they launched it with the Phantom Menace to really promote things. And it was really, really exciting to, to see in stores, but it, you know, didn't, didn't keep the momentum then throughout the, the rest. And of the this week. is, this is maybe worth mentioning, you know, the, the origin of this product is there was a lot of complaints that Star Wars CCG was too complicated for younger players. So the whole young Jedi uh, nomenclature comes from like little, you know, 10 year old young Jedi is learning to play this game. And so it is tended like to be a simpler game than the sort of big brother in Star Wars CCG. Um, I, you know, that's just something to mention here uh, for folks wondering why the rules seem simple. The rules definitely get more complicated as sets get added on, but the first set it is, pretty simple game to learn because the intended audience was sort of the younger uh, folks and then graduate them up to Star Wars CCG. Yeah, and, it, and it's a battling card game. It's just nothing but battles, so. Yeah. Um, well, this has been a lot of fun, Eric. Thanks for, for hanging out and opening some packs, and we'll catch everybody next time.